program would like to begin by acknowledging and thanking the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, who are the traditional custodians of this land we are upon. We pay our respects to Elders past, present and emerging. Hey Minnie! Minnie? Oh, Minnie's not here. Wrong dentist! Hello and welcome, you gorgeous things, to Live from Stonewall, starring the fabulous Minnie Cooper. Woo! Yeah, we love her. Uh, I'm Steve Milne, and I'll be your host for the next hour of variety, comedy, music, and entertainment. We are live on Facebook tonight, so like, comment, and share us with your friends. Now, planes might be grounded, but that isn't stopping us taking you all over the world tonight. We have stops in London, New York, and even the Gold Coast, but it's going to be fabulous as we have an exciting lineup of guests coming on your screens tonight. Take a look. We'll be chatting to the Aussie Diva with the big voice, Cosima DeVito. We'll be chatting to the Aussie Diva with the big bust, Trevor Ashley. We'll be finding out who's top and who's bottom of Anthony Kalea and Tim Campbell's quarantine playlist. Magician and bachelor hunk Apollo Jackson will be making his clothes disappear in the Gold Coast. Absolutely fabulous star Harriet Thorpe will be joining us live from the UK. And we'll be going live to New York to chat to Bright Light, Bright Light about his brand new music video featuring Madonna's backing singers. Plus, I'll be revealing Queer Screen's top film of the week. And we'll be taking a walk down memory lane exploring the 22 year history of the Stonewall Hotel. Wowzers, what a lineup. Could this show get any more exciting? Well, yes, it can, because here to serve quarantinis and his abs, it's sexy barman, Ivan. There he is. Look at those abs. Right, uh, <laughs> keeping the tunes going tonight is our incredible in house DJ. Give it up for Dan Murphy. <laughs> Woo! Oh, yes. <laughs> Loving him. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, <laughs> What was that? Brilliant. Okay, our socially distanced production crew and guests will be kept safe and sanitised thanks to Pandemic, the mask cleaner. All good there, Pam? <laughs> oh, she loves to keep things squeaky clean, our Pam. Now, without further ado, here she is, freshly tucked and shaved. It's Minnie's big opening. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome Australia. And here is a little song all about me growing up. Hope you enjoy. Hit it, Dan. Want, want, what do I want? Ever since I was a little boy, there's only been one thing I want. I want, I want what every Barbie-loving boy from the Sydney's West could want. I want, I want what I have wanted since the first day I learned how to want. I want to be a drag queen. I want to dance until dawn. I want to be a drag queen, that's what my heart is set upon. I want to be a drag queen, I want to hear the crowd roar. I want to feel the magic when they scream for more and more and more and more. I never wanted to marry, have a wife, that would mean I'd have to eat pussy. I never wanted to be a porno star. I always wanted to be a dancing queen with eye-catching beauty. I want to be a drag queen, and that's no surprise. I want to be a drag queen, oh, how I'll sparkle and I'll shine. I want to be a drag queen, it's one thing I know. And when I'm a drag queen, I'll never miss one. Show them, I'll show them, I'll show them, I'll show them. I never wanted to be a football star. Be famous like guys, Hapawadi, you know, the one that loved the thing you me. I never wanted to be a big rock star. I always wanted to be one of those dazzling manly beauties. I always remember when Mama caught me in her frocks And I was dancing like a showgirl on that stage There was magic everywhere Look at me, Mama, I'd say One of these days, your little boy's gonna wear big hair Big fabulous hair A drag queen, 
Let me out on that stage. I'm going to be a drag queen. They are the greatest entertainers of the days. I'm going to be a drag queen. I'm going to hear the crowd scream. I'm going to know the feeling of getting my dream. And that is my dream, to know how it feels to be someone who's free. To strut in high heels is what I was meant to be. You got to take me, got to take me, got to take me, got to take me, got to take me. Yes, Queen. Give it up for me, Australia. I hope everyone is going well in lockdown and someone that does like to breed like a hare has been on the hunt. Please give it up for my co-host, Steve. What an intro. I do believe you are a breeder in your spare time. Is that correct? Well, there's all sorts of rumours kicking about me. Well, Steve, it is Easter time, right? Yes. And I always do this little song at Easter time, and I need you to get involved. Are you Go willing to get involved? I'll do I need anything. you to stand up. I'll stand up. And you're going to repeat what I want you to do after <laughs> oh, this. Hang on, we didn't rehearse this. Y yeah, I know. Go this on. Is, this I've is the got magic my stick, of, by the this way. This is the magic of live television <laughs> with Minnie Cooper. <laughs> you are going to do everything. You're going to jump. You're going to waddle your ears and wiggle your bum when I tell you. And it goes something like this. The Easter bunny goes jump, jump, jump. <laughs> the Easter <laughs> bunny yes. goes bump, bump, bump. The Easter Bunny's ears go flop, flop, flop. <laughs> jump, jump, bump, bump, flop, flop, flop. Look at you, you homosexual. Oh, that was, honestly, that's brilliant. I've never done that before. Listen, I've got my big stick, so you and need you to back off. And you'll probably never do, do it again, Steve. <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> never again. Thank you, Minnie. You're looking fabulous as always tonight. Of course I do. I can't say the same about you, no, though. No, listen, I just, you know, I've gone, you know, don't tell Hans. Right. Now, lots of people have been looking for law sorts this Easter weekend, especially you, Minnie, and things have been getting a little bit steamy online. Yes, this week, lots has been happening. Scruff users have certainly been busy. Take a look. Hey, you are very sexy. I've never done this before, you know, like Skype sex or FaceTime sex. Well, it's pretty easy. Uh, usually you just start by taking off your clothes like this. It seems easy enough. <laughs> nice. What's next? How about I show you my big Oh, hello? You there? You like that? Oh, good, you're back. I th the screen froze, so I didn't actually get to see what you were showing me. Oh, that's okay. I can show it to you again. Here's my big. <laughs> no, it's it's happening again. Uh, how about I show you the other side? Oh, you, you, well, I didn't see the earlier. You're gonna go crazy when you see my. What if I insert? Oh, this. Are those tongs? Oh. Oh, what? What? It's really hot. Uh, yeah, sorry, dude. I think your connection's fucked up, so I'm gonna go. I can't believe you've gone through my phone. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you use something? Oh, my God, I can't look up. Tongs? What's he doing with tongs? Well, you, when you get the tongs, you know, you can separate it oh like dear. that, and you can get in much easier. You should try it. I'll give it a go. It's like going in for the oven. You've got to have the tongs to get inside the oven. Inside, you need your mitts. Do you go inside the oven often, <laughs> Steve? Sorry, you don't find me in the kitchen very often, love. Are you, are you more the oven? No, yeah, well, it can be. <laughs> oh, you can be the oven. Yeah. I want to know. Are you right. the oven or are you like you the tong man? I want to know. Um, it depends what mood I'm in. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're versatile. Got it. Got oh, it. Moving good. along. Yeah, moving there we along. go. I'm glad we cleared that up. Um, now, listen, things have also been heating up for everyone at Centrelink. Yes, uh, have a look. Welcome to the Centrelink Employment Services line. The temporary coronavirus supplement is $550 per fortnight and will be automatically paid with your regular job seeker payment from 27th of April. You do not have to do anything. If your job has been affected by the coronavirus and you need to make a claim for support, start at servicesaustralia.gov.au forward slash job seeker. Oh, geez. Hey, Dan Murphy, Pick. I see what you've been up to in your spare time. There we go. Uh, yeah, I, I, I take my Centrelink <laughs> payment off you. <laughs> Have you ever done anything like that before, Steve? I want to know. What? 
I've worked in call centres before. Have you? Yeah. That, that's the only real job I've ever had outside of entertainment. Yeah. Was wheelchair sports. It was. The, I had it for one day. It's the only real job I've ever had. I remember I was on the phone once to this um, this person, and uh, I basically was talking to her, yeah. and uh, she hung up the phone, or so I thought. And I was like, Oh my God! What is she's just such an annoying bitch? I can't believe that she was saying that. Click. <laughs> and I was just like, She heard that. Can I say welcome Oops. to my life, Steve? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> Right, uh, right, yes, we need to stay at home and we need to stay safe, yes we do. And we will do our best to entertain you. So, if you're watching right now, text your mates and tell them to get online, donate and watch. Our shows run on donations and you can donate right now using the donate button on your feed. We need your help to keep this going, keep our community connected, but most importantly, give 10% of all our donations to our chosen charity of the week. More about that a little bit later on. Now, are you ready? He's an award-winning Australian artist and musician with a brand new YouTube series, Major Minors, which features some incredible guest stars. Take a look. Today, as you know, we're meeting Danny. I'm a little nervous, but I'm more excited. We are super excited to have you here. I'm gonna give, the, give you the hard sell. Yes, this is a great <laughs> career. Hopefully some good advice. Would you ever go on stage without a heel? You know the answer is <laughs> no. <laughs> Baby, I'm daddy. What you need? Do you know I'm daddy? Cause all I'm asking is for a little spend when come home. Hey baby, when you come home. She taught me some tips about music and fashion and she even has her own fashion line in Oh, here he is. BP Major is on Skype with us. Welcome. Hi, BP. Hi, Minnie, darling. What Hi, time guys. is it How in LA? What time is it in LA, BP? 3 a.m., honey. Oh, and can I just say, you look so young at this time of the night. <laughs> BP... Well, Minnie, can I just say to you, you look stunning as always, and... You know, in the 90s, we would have been up at 3 a.m., but <laughs> now in the 2000s, this is not normal. No, it's a bit late, isn't it? How do you guys know each other then? Tell us how you know each other. Oh, my gosh. I've known Minnie since, what? I don't want to age myself, but <laughs> I'd say but you can 97, age me if you 98. And we danced behind one of the Minogues once in the year 2000. Oh, yes. Oh, my God. So this is a, this is a funny story. So... Uh, back in the, you know, still to this day, where the Minogues and I are very close, and at the Olympics for the closing ceremony, Kylie and I had worked out all these moments that we would have camera, camera, you know, opportunities to be seen. I mean, she was seen, and I was like, let me be on the camera with you, right? So, you know, then there was all this um, uh, malfunctions with the stage and all this drama that went on on the day that nobody knew about. But when the when the when it finally aired. The only dancer that got all the screen time was bloody Minnie Cooper. Thank you. <laughs> Who don't, I always love a malfunction. Thank you very much. So, BP, tell me what things have you been up to in LA since you've moved away from Australia? Okay, I've been here for about 13 years. Um, one of the first gigs I did here, I, I got booked to do to be a background actor. Can you believe it or not? In a movie with um, Ron Howard. And I was getting paid $64 for eight hours work. And um, I kept thinking, you know what? I'm not even going to show up to this. I'm just not, I'm not even going. And then I thought, you know what? Let's manifest, manifest. I'm going to, I'm going to go there and Ron's going to give me a role in the movie and he's going to put me in the union and I'm, I'm going to get paid thousands of dollars. And um, I swear to God, I walk in on set, the assistant director comes in, asks for me, takes me on set to introduce me to Ron Howard, gives me a role in the movie, puts me in SAG, and I got paid thousands of dollars. Ooh. Oh, you did make crazy thousands story. of dollars. That's a crazy story. <laughs> Can you, you know what I'm loving what you're doing? Because I am a teacher as well, as pe people may or may not know this. I just adore the television show that you've put together with little Gia called Major Minus. It's like the gay version of Dance Mums. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us a bit about Thank that you. show? Absolutely. So I started working with Gia just over about a year ago. And her dad was asking me, you know, can you can you listen to my girl sing? And I'm like, oh, yeah, whatever. And so she comes in and she sings for me. And I'm like, 
oh, this kid is good. So then we started working together and then I was like, okay, I can see something here. And then I started reaching out to a lot of my friends, you know, Miss J from Top Model and Danny Minogue and Melissa from Dance Moms. And um, I'm like, can you guys come in? I want to start shooting this kid because I think she's this kid could really be something. So then this, this little sort of favor turns into um, this new show, which we now have on YouTube. And it's really fantastic. And I really love it. And I love the kid. She's an incredible talent. And I was on the phone with Danny today. She's Danny is so excited because she came in on episode three to mentor Gia on her on her wardrobe and on her performance. And so we're gonna do a live with Danny on Wednesday on Instagram. But she was just like, I I love major minors. It's like young talent time, but like yeah. better. <laughs> I know it's like dance moms without any book throwing. I, I what I love is your chemistry with this young girl, and it's about building her up and not bringing her down. I highly recommend everybody watch this show. Yeah, check it out. I adore it. And Thank BP, you. I'm going to let you go to bed now. Yeah, Thank thanks you very for getting much. up or staying up. I love you all. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, BP. Thank you, BP. There we go. You can't get any younger, BP, I promise you. <laughs> Three o'clock in the morning, that's so good. Now, BP does actually have something he wants to show you, Minnie. Oh, I hope yes. he, hopefully he keeps his clothes on. Well, well, let's have a look. Hi, Minnie, it's me, Gia. I'm sorry I can't be with you right now because it's 2 a.m. in Los Angeles and BP makes me go to bed early. I saw your video on Australia's Got Talent and it was awesome. I love to tag dance too. BP said he would like to record with me and I think that's a great idea. I'm so excited. Thank you so much for watching Major Minors. Hopefully one day I can come visit you in Australia. Bye! Oh my God, that is going to be the best thing I've ever done in my career. If I get to do a video and sing with her, I think my life is, I could die after You that. could, you've done, oh, she seems gorgeous. Oh, I know, she is so talented. I hi highly oh. recommend you check her out. And I can't wait to sing with G. I'll have to tee that up with the old BP. That sounds amazing. There you go. See, look what this show's bringing you. People are loving it. It's fantastic. And ladies and gentlemen, we've got something very special. Someone that else that has a very big voice and is, loves to belt songs out at the Sydney Opera House. Let's take a look. Oh, I don't pop my cock for every man I stake. Gentlemen, our next guest Love is that. the wonderful Trevor Ashley. But before we have the wonderful Trevor, Steve, do you mind leaving? Because yeah, I, I need go. Pam to clean Trevor's stool. Yeah, there we go. In you come, Pam. This is Pam Demick. She is our mass singer. It could be anyone from Nikki Webster to Kate Sobrano. Could even be Gretel Colleen. <laughs> there we go. Keep cleaning. There we go. Squeaky, squeaky, squeaky. That sounds like my thighs when I walk in the morning when I'm exercising. That does. There we go. I love a good clean stool. Thank you, Pam. <laughs> and please welcome to the stage theatre legend, the one, the only, Trevor Ashley! <laughs> Hello, sweetheart. We have to do air kisses from yes. across the room. We've got our, we've got our social distancing I know stick our, there. Our social distancing it stick. It is like the gayest thing you've seen since, like... I don't know, since Nikki Webster performed at Sleazeball. Absolutely. How are you, darling? I am wonderful. How are you coping with the lockdown? Look, it's been it's been interesting. I've certainly it's not been the easiest mm. because I was overseas and then had to do the 14 days in complete quarantine. Luckily I got to go home. It was before they made you go to a hotel. Mm. Uh, but it was pretty full on. Like actually being in the ho in at home for that t entire time, not ever a being able to leave, mm. it was it was quite terrifying. And and you know, I'm I'm very concerned about uh, people who do live alone. I think there's a lot of a lot of our community do oh, live no, by themselves. Oh, and no. I think this is one of the toughest things to get through. It is really about making sure that you're reaching out to a lot mm. of your friends, especially if you think they might be vulnerable, mm. and if you think that they might be. Uh, 
missing that, you know, that interaction. Yeah, yeah. And, and, it is, and it is tough and say, call them up and say, can we go for a walk? Mm. At least, you know, so as you're out and about. And well, you weren't able to do that for 14 days. No, and that was really tough. Mm. And I've got other friends who are in quarantine in hotels now, and that's that's horrendous. Like they don't get any fresh air or anything. And you have a lot of friends that are in the theatre business. How yes. are they coping with, you know, the government not looking? They're falling through the cracks. Like, I find this so upsetting because they pay their taxes. Yep. They do everything that everybody else does, but because they're on short contracts, they fall through the cracks. I find that so upsetting and disturbing. It is, and, and there really hasn't been any support from the government for uh, any of the entertainers and uh, uh, to, you know, to even get maybe mm. Centrelink and sometimes they live with a partner and if the partner earns too much money, mm. even though they don't share finances, you know, they can't mm. get any kind of support. benefit or support. Uh. No. And I think it's just also, it, it's, it's making fi people feel who are already bewildered by this whole, uh, by this whole pandemic and the way that we're having to live and, the, and that drastic change has happened to our lives so quickly. And I think that there's a lot of people out there who are going... Um, who are feeling like the government is is ignoring them? Well, feels like the government they is. Are, yes, <laughs> they are. Yes, they I don't know. have to feel it. I think it's quite obvious they are. I know, but it I is, have noticed it's tough. you have been doing your amazing cabaret shows online, which I am just loving, and you're doing one tomorrow. Can I'm you doing talk about one that? tomorrow. So tomorrow night I'm doing Liza, uh, Liza Liza's Minnelli. Back. Liza's back for Resurrection Easter Sunday. Uh, so <laughs> it should be fun. She lives again. She walks again, and she'll do New York, New York again. I promise. Um, so <laughs> we're going to do a whole bunch of numbers, and I'm very excited. Can about you just it. give a little sneak preview of New York, New York, Trevor. My, a little child blues are melting away. I make a brand new start of it in old New York. Trevor, tune in tomorrow night. What time, Trevor? Seven o'clock. Seven o'clock on Facebook Live. Head over and like my page. It's the Trevor Ashley, and uh, I'm going to try and do most Sunday nights. I'll be doing some kind of live cabaret. Um, come along, uh, enjoy it. If you have money and can donate, then great. If you have no job but just want some great entertainment, it's there for you too for nothing. And I love that. And what a person to do it, bringing cabaret into your homes. Please give it up for the sensational Trevor Ashley. Now, Trevor. I'm going to do something really nice for you right now. Oh. I'm going to let you go back to the bar and have a oh. quar quarantini and look at a van. I'm going to do that. Yeah. Thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up one more time for Trevor Ashley. Pam, back in Pam. Clean that stool. There she goes. She is a cleaner. If anybody's looking for a cleaner, please look out for Pam. She does mansions. She does hostels. She'll even do my home if I allow her in. You've got my keys, haven't you, Pam? Good. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up one more time for Pandemic. And welcome back to the stage, my gorgeous co-host, Steve. I'm back. I'm back there. Oh, my gosh. You are back. I'm back. How did you do enjoy Trevor then? Yeah, oh, he's so good. Are well, you going to tune in tomorrow night? Oh, my gosh, yeah. Everything on Facebook at the moment is so good. We're Isn't loving it. it. It's so, we're on it. Because we're on it. And everything's, you know, fabulous and entertaining. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. And actually, our show runs on donations. And you guys can donate right now using the donate button on your feed. We are live on Facebook. So like, comment, and share us around like a piece of meat. Now, we could all do with a helping hand in this time of need. It's my favorite part of the show. It's just the tip. Uh, Melania Trump. Oh, here we go. <laughs> here we go. No. Melania Trump has addressed the American. <laughs> Sorry, it's really funny. Uh, Melania Trump has addressed uh, the American uh, nation with uh, another one of her sultry White House videos. <laughs> Have a look. Oh, I can't wait. As the CDC continue to study the spread of COVID-19, they're recommending that people wear cloth face coverings in public settings. You'd swear to God Saturday Night Live did that, wouldn't you? you that is really the First well, I mean, Lady of America. It is like Comedy 101, isn't it? It is comedy. And also, did you notice that she didn't have a lot to say, but she was definitely reading autocue as well. You know, she, she never has a lot to say. Not a lot to say, but her eyes, I mean, But you she know. always looks amazing. She does, she does. And that's like me. Yes, gorgeous. don't really have a lot to say, but I always fucking oh, look you amazing. Oh, you do. You do gorgeous. Thank now, you. Thank don't you. worry, Melania. The gays have got you covered. Take your favorite jock strap, mine's ready for pride, face it towards you, 
And step one, put the waistband over your head. Step two, take the leg bands, cross them over your head, and secure them beneath your nose. Okay. Uh, Step guys, three, guys, take the so excess know. waistband and pull it over your forehead, securing your jockstrap mask in place. You can make different choices. The internet may be out of masks, bandanas, and scarves, but it's not out of jockstraps. It's not okay that I can even make this outfit. And yes, straight boys, you can make it with that sad tired one you still have from high school football or whatever. The waistband's a little awkward, but it'll do. So new, used, or worn, it's your choice. Love it, you can always trust the gays. Now, people are getting really, really inventive in the kitchen, like Claire Deloon from Sydney. Have a look. When you come back in the kitchen, of course, as chefs, we wash our hands maybe one other time a day, so that's not a problem. And uh, we, but now we also um, use hand sanitizer, and I noticed that there is quite a uh, a shortage of hand sanitizer. So I came up with a, a simple recipe. You only need three ingredients really. You need methylated spirits, you need uh, an aloe vera gel, and if you're lucky like me and have a beautiful aloe vera plant on your balcony, you can actually use the pulp, fresh pulp of the aloe, aloe vera plant. You need a few drops of essential oil. I'm using eucalyptus because it is antiseptic, but you can use lavender, you can use sandalwood, that sort of thing, just to give a nice flavor, flavor, smell to your to your gel. All you need to do is two thirds of a cup of uh, um, methylated spirit, one third of a cup of aloe vera. And why we're using aloe vera is because the alcohol in the metal is quite drying for your hands, so that actually is a moisturizer. And a few drops of oil, mix it all together nicely. Reuse one of your bottles um, that you have empty now, and here you are. You have your own homemade hand sanitizer. Very good. I just use gin. Now, the thing about isolation is it allows people the time to really experiment with their looks. Brad Guy from Melbourne, who we love here on the show, definitely goes all out. Oh, look. I felt pressured by a meme. I was meme pressured this week. It was just Tiger King meme after Tiger King meme after Tiger King meme. If you don't know, there's a documentary series on Netflix. It's called Tiger King, Mayhem, Murder, Mischief, a bunch of other M words. <laughs> Basically, it's this documentary series following this Oklahoma zookeeper who is a gay polygamist redneck that kind of runs this cult. There's espionage, there's murder, there's explosions. Everyone in the show is absolutely cooked. So I thought while I'm in quarantine, I will Will bust my boredom by transforming myself into Brad Exotic, the weird little cousin of Joe Exotic. Here I have bleach! Yay! <laughs> I'm going to let the bleach activate for about 40 minutes. <sighs> I actually look like Joe Exotic. I look like Joe Exotic. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Come on down to my zoo where I have. Husbands, I have meth, I have cats, and I have herpes. <laughs> I <laughs> a Joe Exotic transformation wouldn't be complete without a Joe Exotic music video, so I present to you now the debut single from Brad Exotic, Like a Tiger Tail. I got heart and I got soul. I'm always next to an asshole. Just like a tiger tail You see me wag when I'm excited I never should have been indicted Oh, just like a tiger tail oh, so I love iconic. that. I love that. I love his blonde hair. And oh. I mean, as a natural blonde yourself, Minnie, you must like that look. I wouldn't call that blonde hair. I'd call it yellow. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, everyone is getting in on the action, so we thought we'd reach out to some of the celebs out there to give us some homestyle isolation survival tips. Joining us tonight, all the way from the Gold Coast, is the Bachelor at Hunk with the magic fingers. It's Apollo Jackson. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Hey, how are you going? Sorry, we we're uh, just experiencing. You get bored? Oh, bit. don't be sorry. It looks like you're naked. <laughs> oh, hello. Half naked. It's Saturday night. Oh, is it Sunday is it? when you get fully there we naked? Go. Is it? <laughs> How are you guys going? Thanks for having me on the show. Oh, oh. no, thanks for having your shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 
It's the kind of rule around here, Minnie, isn't it? You've got to have your shirt off where, where applicable. Um, so apparently you're going to show us a magic trick. I yes. do a magic trick every Saturday night where I make 10 inches disappear. What can you do? <laughs> Pretty tough act to follow that one. Um, I know. I'm just going to do a basic mind reading trick tonight. With a okay. Twist. So I'm just going to go through the cards like this, and I want you to tell me to stop whenever you want. I don't ever want you to stop. <laughs> stop. <laughs> All right, we're going to ready? Oops. Yeah, stop. There? Okay. I want you to have a look at the card, remember it? Yeah, got it. So let me see it. Easy. Okay, I'm going to ask you two questions and try and get the card from this. Okay. Is the card red or black? Do I tell you that? Yep. Yeah. Oh, it's red. 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 And second question. You go to an ice cream parlour. You've got tutti frutti or chocolate. Which do you choose? Chocolate. Chocolate. Easy one. All right. I, th I, th I think I've. I think I know what we're going for here. Now, don't tell me what your card is yet. Always like to try and play it safe. Um, I love boys. Uh, <laughs> oh, I love it! What? Yeah, he what, plays what, it safe. What was your card? Yes, it is. It, yes, it's well. my card. <laughs> <laughs> seven hearts, wasn't it? Yeah, what, seven what and a half inches. Sorry. What card are you thinking of? Oh, I don't know. Can I? Will I tell you? Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. Seven of seven of hearts. Is yeah, that, that what I meant it. to do? Seven oh, okay. I'm shit at this. I'm too busy staring at you, topless. Sorry. I'm distracted. It's like this, there's one card inside. Oh my god. Don't. Don't you dare. Don't you dare. I'm going to shit myself. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. You just made me implode everywhere. Like real magic. <laughs> that was amazing. Oh, that's oh, good. That's that is. That's like Scruff Online, isn't it? That is. It is. It really is. <laughs> now do it with your jeans off. No, that's pushing it No, a lot. that's <laughs> going way too All far. Right, way that's too, a bit far. too below the belt, literally. Um, yeah, how, listen, how have you been with this isolation malarkey? Obviously, everyone's going a little bit crazy. How have you been handling it? Yeah, well, we were actually over in uh, Indonesia when the whole thing hit. So we were kind of none the wiser because Indonesia, Bali was sort of business as usual over there. So um, it was about two, three weeks into the holiday and we started getting videos of people fighting over toilet paper and um, all this crazy stuff going on. Are you guarding that toilet paper with your life at the moment? Well, this, this was the last one left. <laughs> Well, you could probably make more to just appear, can't you? You're a magician. Can you make more oh. toilet paper appear? Yeah, do a trick with your toilet paper. <laughs> you make it disappear. I, I defied an 85-year-old woman for this. <laughs> <laughs> I saw no, so, um, were you on the news? Yeah. yeah. So, we, uh, yeah, we, we got back and we were in isolation and we, we just didn't realise how crazy it was. But um, I've actually enjoyed the time. It's been pretty cool. Just been kicking back and playing around with magic and got horses at home, so spending a bit of time with them. Yeah, it's been good. And what's the, what's, the, what's the things that's got you through it? What's got you through the isolation? Definitely Uber Eats. Definitely Uber Eats. It's funny, as soon as I was like, okay, we've got time now. I'm going to spend more time and actually learn to cook better and start cooking my own meals. I think I've had takeaway probably every single night so oh, far. Wow. Do you know what's getting me through this isolation? You are. <laughs> <laughs> Loving those magic tricks. Right. Uh, thank you, Apollo. So good to have you on the show. Thank you very much for your magic trick. I can't believe that you pulled a card out of a condom. I've seen everything now. Thank you, my love. Thank you. Thanks, How good is that? Oh, I can wow. die a happy man tonight after That's watching amazing. that. That's amazing. I was thinking, you know, choose a card and, we, and it comes out. He ripped it out of the condom. Amazing. Right. I think we should check in on Dan. Dan, how are you doing back there? Oh, not bad. Holding it up. Holding it up. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for one of Sydney's most amazing DJs. Dan Murphy, play us a tune, Dan, play us a tune. You wake up to that in the morning, don't I you? Do. So, Dan, last night you had a wonderful night, I believe, on the Facebook about your I Remember House. How did that go? We did. We had a four-hour I Remember House session live online, DJs beaming in from around the country and audience beaming in from around the world like they are here tonight. And what about, did you have the police shutting you down? No, the police didn't shut us down this time, like they used to, but <laughs> Facebook shut us down four times. And, and, you know, Dan and I, we have a bit of a history together. We like to spill some tea on the RuPaul's of the drag race. I haven't had a chance to watch it today, but I want to talk about last week. How did you feel about Aiden impersonating... Patricia Quinn, what's your <laughs> feelings on that, please, Dan? Can you please spill the tea? Absolute car crash. <laughs> Dreadful. Terrible impersonation. Not funny. Where are the jokes? Well, they definitely were with her or either with Britta the spitter. <laughs> 
can I just say, calm down, young girl, and keep your spit in. We are in a pandemic. <laughs> we are in a pandemic. <laughs> I want to hear some tunes, what? Dan. Oh, give well, us I've got one lined up. Yeah, right. give us your tunes. Oh, what's this one? I'd love to dance with this with Apollo. You can dance with your stick. Yeah. Oh. It's a little bit slower than it normally is, and I don't know why. Well, I'm a little <laughs> bit slower than I normally am as well, and I don't know why. <laughs> anyway, we'll keep it under 30 seconds for yes. legalities. Keep the, okay. keep, the, keep the lawyers Is that happy. like your sex life, Dan Mur Murphy? <laughs> Always under 30 seconds? Yeah, that's if I do it twice. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, give it up my mod for Dan Murphy! <laughs> Pam, you should be cleaning. What's she doing? Look at her. That's great. Right, thank you, Dan, and thank you all for watching at home. Now, our show runs on donations. You can donate right now using the donate button on your feed. We are live on Facebook tonight, so like, comment, and share us around like an STD in a hostel. Okay. We are now going to sh shortly going live to New York City to chat with one of Queer Pop's most exciting artists. He's about to release his fourth album. He's worked with some of the biggest names in the music industry, from Elton John, the Scissor Sisters, Erasure, and Sher, to name just a few. Here's an exclusive clip from his brand new video, This Was My House. Check it out. This was my house and I was not supposed to worry about it. This was the place that I was not supposed to be. This was my house and I was not supposed to worry about it. This was the place that I was not supposed to fear. This was my house and I was not supposed to worry about it. Ooh, I hope that you remember where you came from. Ooh, I hope that you remember what you knew. Ooh, oh, welcome, Bright Light, Bright Light. Thank you for staying up to the wee hours of the morning. <laughs> oh, you're ever so welcome. I look so fresh, so clean. I feel fantastic. Well, I'm sure How it's not you? the first time you've gotten home at 5 a.m. in the morning. <laughs> Absolutely not, no. <laughs> What's nightlife like over there in New York having been in lockdown? It's really weird, you know, like I live in Manhattan, so I'm right in the middle of the city, but I haven't seen anybody since the 15th of March. So I'm just like oh, wow. in the middle of everything, but I'm completely alone. It's a really odd experience. It's, it's very, very, very strange at the moment. Listen, can I ask you, because I'm really intrigued, you've been working with Madonna's backing singers. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. Um, it's oh. wild. Um, yeah. Wild. Uh, yeah, so like uh, one of my friends works with Nikki, and um, we were talking a little while ago about doing something together and... I didn't really know what to suggest. And then when I worked on this song, cause it sounds so much like it's an homage to the period of time where like, you know, Madonna and those girls were doing the Blonde Ambition tour and like the wow, Erotica yeah. album and like the Shep Pettibone work. So I thought that would be a good idea. And miraculously they agreed and they sing on it. It's wild. That is wow. like the gayest thing since you touring <laughs> with Cher really, isn't it? Uh, yeah, which is the gayest thing that I've ever done. And I've been on tour with Elton John. So like, <laughs> yeah, my world is pretty um, rainbow. And Cher, you've been on tour with Cher. What's that like? Re just really gay. Um, <laughs> it was... It was kind of mad. I kind of felt like I was in Queer as Folk. Yeah. Like when I was growing up, Queer as Folk was on TV in the UK. And, um, you know, you just hear like Believe pounding every single week. And, and yeah, it was mad. I've got news for you. Your life is Queer as Folk, doll. <laughs> Girl, I know. Um, I just want to say as well, I was watching online. Trevor Ashley is one of my favourite performers. Oh, um, Trevor. He loves oh, wow. you. Yeah. There we go. If you're in my apartment, if you look out of that door... Um, just through there are the people that produced his New York show of Liza's Back is Broken. Oh. Um, my friends, Matthew and Andy. I went to the Matthew show. It's Andy. amazing. Yeah, it's oh, well, yes. There we wow. go. I lo I didn't, we didn't even know that we had that connection, and I love that we have that. Welcome. Yeah, it's, wow. the world is just so tiny. It's, it's so small. Well, some things in the world are tiny, but definitely not the thing you had between your legs that I was looking at earlier. <laughs> Oh, it's gorgeous. <laughs> Let's go with that. Spread that. Spread that rumor. I love your disco ball, by the way. But can I ask about club nights at, 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 at Club Cummings? What's that like? It's amazing. I mean, you've seen Alan perform, yeah. right, on like yeah. TV and stage, whatever. So he has this gorgeous club called Club Coming. It's love a it. tiny little space. It's probably not that much bigger than my apartment, actually. <laughs> 
Um, and I do these daytime parties called Romy Michelle's Saturday afternoon tea party oh, based on the movie. Yeah. Um, and people come and they make requests on post-it notes. Post-its, and, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's really fun. So like there's a very open music policy. It's whatever you want to listen to or request. And it was my way of like kind of tackling the fact that lots of people don't like the very late night life. Lots of people don't do drugs, don't smoke, don't drink. You know, they have kids or whatever, or they have they work in nightlife. So it's a daytime thing where people can come and dance from like three till eight p.m. Um, and listen to like Gina G album tracks yes, and like music that. from the films and yeah, Liza like Minnelli just, and you know um, so like easy. all this weird wonderful stuff. And it's made this really nice community of people in his space. Like it's just weird and wonderful people that have made friends there and just kind of like dance and twirl. Like people bring kids in buggies and like leave them in the corner and have a couple of margaritas. It's amazing. <laughs> Wild. I love it there. Listen, before we go, can we ask about your new record label and album? Can you tell us about that before you say bye? Yes. So I have set up a new record label called Yas Queen. Um, <laughs> yes, uh, Queen, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've set it up to put my new record out with um, The Orchard, who are like a distribution company. Um, but I'm also using it as a creative collective so that I can highlight support and um, uh, promote LGBTQ plus businesses and creatives across the world. Um, there are a lot of people that don't have money for like exposure and there are lots of people doing kind of behind the scenes work. And I kind of feel like I'm a gay immigrant living in America and my identity as like both an immigrant and a gay man are really important to me. Yeah. So I'm trying to <clears throat> tap into and connect lots of the LGBTQ plus creatives, businesses, entrepreneurs, um, activists, mentors, charity workers in whatever way I can to build the community like online. Like this is amazing. Being part of this is so amazing and that you guys are doing this. It's, it's so great and like the visibility and the rays of hope that you give to people knowing that there are other people doing similar kind of work, you know, like you with physical spaces are closed, you can't go and meet people now. So having a way to connect people is really important Which to me. Which is exactly so that's why we're doing do. this and your support is just great. So thank you so much for coming on the show tonight and everything that you're Very doing cool. sounds so exciting. So thank you. Wow. So Thank you. Love your work. Go back to bed now. <laughs> Go have some sleep. Have some sleep or just keep going. Oh, lovely. What, I just love that. It was really amazing. I loved him. I could, have watched, I could have watched him forever. I don't know if he's I gay mean, enough. so fascinating. Do you think he's gay enough? I don't know if he's gay enough. Oh, yeah, he's definitely that, gay you know. enough. Absolutely, with that handlebar <laughs> moustache. I love it. Now, oh. listen, it's this time of the show, I think we should check in on the bar. Oh. I love checking on the bar. We have a, have a chat to these guys. What do you reckon? Absolutely. I reckon we should go there. Hey, hey, Ivan. Make it a, a stiff, stiff one. one. Oh, look. I bet you Trev's got a stiff one right now, that's for sure. <laughs> you guys haven't, they're all pretend drinks, by the way, because you can't really drink. You're not allowed yes, to. Yes, there is no alcohol no. here in the Stonewall venue, just so people know. Yeah, all just of Just that we're not really having a party, it's all acting. It's yes. what we call acting. Yeah. We're, just so you know. Big, thank you, yes. So they're all just having, you know, a double of How's water. How's your water, Trevor? Yeah, that double lovely. water and lime. Yes. Every time I turn around, it's all filled up again. It's oh, like magic. I <laughs> bet you've never had so much water since 1972, Trent. Never. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> down. Yeah, down. Right, pandemic's over there cleaning as well. Thank you, guys. The, the, the bar's always fun over there, isn't it? They're it in the best actually, time. Can we just take a look at pandemic's jug there? What? It actually looks like urine to me. <laughs> it looks like a urine <laughs> yeah, sample. Yeah, it does. Do you need to get that checked? Yeah. yeah, I think we best get that checked. Okay, right. Thank you, Ivan. Uh, and thank you all for watching at home. Now, our show runs on donations, and you can donate right now using the donate button on your feed. Now, we are live on Facebook tonight, so like, comment, and share us around like a bottle of poppers. Now, I think... Oh, thank you. Uh, I think it's time we now check in with our next captive superstar. Now, one's an award-winning musician and the other's a huge TV star. They've recently been podcasting from home uh, with a show called Happy Hour, Talking Crap and Cocktails. It's very, very funny. Even our Rhonda Birchmore has featured on it. Yep, it's the couple so handsome and perfect it makes you sick. It's Anthony Kalea and Tim Campbell. Hello, homos. Woo! What are you making Sorry. there tonight, boys? Got my hand full. Oh, well, we're, you know, I'm... we're white suburban boys, so obviously espresso martinis, you know. Oh, and it's all about course. getting a good head. 
You two have been entertaining me for weeks on the Instagram. I'm loving your uh, Real Housewives of Melbourne yesterday. That was a sensational thing. I'm loving what you're doing there. It's funny, we tagged them all in them and... Um, Still the waiting. Only, yeah, the only one Still that came waiting. back was Anthony Moss. <laughs> <laughs> The funniest thing I've seen on your Instagram actually is Tim doing the cooking and Anthony, you sitting there with like a remote, like you're <laughs> directing Tim to do the cooking. I'm very good at that. Um, <laughs> that's, that's kind of, whether it's ISO or not, that's kind of pretty much everyday life here. Um, we yeah. actually don't cook. <laughs> so, we heat. I was just, so, married life is obviously going very well then for you guys. Mm. Well, us in isolation because fuck me, this is difficult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So, Anthony, I do believe you dropped a single yesterday in amongst all this craziness. Yeah, um, I had these songs that I've been wanting to release and I just thought, well, no one's doing anything, so everyone's <laughs> on socials and so maybe this is a good time to do, drop some new music. And so, yeah, dropped um, a track called Lonely Yesterday and in four weeks' time I'm going to drop another track. So depending on how long we're in isolation for, I'm just going to keep dropping tracks. There's seven <laughs> albums by the end of it. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm just normally dropping on a Friday, Saturday night, and I'm dropping no tracks. <laughs> just don't drop your drinks. <laughs> what's the, listen, guys, what's the first thing you're going to do when you can get out and just live a normal life? What are you looking forward to doing? I want to host a party. Yes. Like, I just want to host a post-ISO party. Yeah. And... Um, and just invite as many people over. Can we come? Can we mini come? <laughs> Absolutely. <Yeah. laughs> we open house. I mean, beyond kind of Zoom parties or whatever else, it's been us and Milko pretty much, which has um, been the party. For, that's an old home and away reference for those who are 85 like me. Thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and how, how's your dog coping in isolation with you both? I see you're, 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 what sort of dog do you have? He's Where's a your dog? He's a, a lab kelpie. Uh, he's an RSPCA kind of special, that one. He's got, got bits of everything, but he's great. He, um, he's loving us being home. He's actually a shit. He's become a diva now, so I don't know where he gets that from. <laughs> and listen, guys, what's, what's got you through this pandemic? Like, what's, your, what's, your, what's the items at home that's got you through this malarkey oh, we're experiencing? Besides booze. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, pretty much, we have, we have been drinking more than a lot. I think we've got to stop that next week. Um, just the stuff online just to keep us active more than everyone else as well. And that's kind of it. We're like most of the entertainment industry saying just waiting for the bloody bug to piss off and we, then we can get back into it. We don't have any gigs. We don't. Everything got cancelled, so I'm just going to drink through it. <laughs> just drink through it. I, I want to know how long it takes both of you to learn like a Kath and Kim script. How to get it down? Because oh. your miming is better than any drag queen I've ever seen in Sydney. <laughs> it is like absolutely amazing. Well, there's so many scenes to choose from. So, okay, like the stuff we've done online so far, it's just happened. Um, see, there's Captain Kim here, the housewives, so much to choose from. But we just, we pretty much get the scene, listen to it a lot, like go, go away for 15 minutes and come back and see if we can get are it you, in. So it's kind are of, you guys a fan of Beverly Hills housewives? Yes. Can yes. you please do the Lisa Rinna scene with the glass? <laughs> yes. Yes, you always, you've got to do that, that one. Yeah. That's okay. Can I? Have, that'll be. Can you? That's my bucket list, please. I need to see you both do the Lisa Rinna scene. If you're smashing of the glass. If you've got the time, that is. Oh, they've got the fucking time. <laughs> Look at the whole thing series for fuck's sake. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wicked. All right, listen, guys. I'm so jealous of your drinks, aren't you? They look know, great. That's real alcohol. That's real it? alcohol. They're allowed real alcohol. Ladies and gentlemen, all yeah. we have here is Coke. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not the stuff you can like no. have a good time on. Well. I've got some water somewhere. Thank you, guys. It's so good to see you both. And uh, thanks for getting in touch. I like, I'm like, i loving watching them online. I love those boys. So if good. you've not followed them, follow them on the yeah. Instagram. They are highly fucking entertaining. They are. I'm loving they are. them. Gorgeous. Right. Uh, now, as much as we really like to receive Woo! your Woo! donations, we also like to give oh, you prizes. You filthy lot. Uh, and this week, we are giving you more lubricant than you could ever dream of, courtesy of our friends at Swiss Navy. That's right. We have 10 Swiss Navy goodie bags uh, to give away. Now, uh, let's have a look and see what's in the bag, shall we? Ivan, you've got the bag there. Let's have a look and see what's oh, in... Oh, what did you just drop there, Ivan? All right, My Ivan. career? What's in it? <laughs> we've got a sailor's Ooh. hat. Yeah. Ooh, hello. I love yeah. a seaman. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. What else you got? Lube. Good. Lube. Got lube. Uh, More lube. Oh, good. More lube. More lube. More. More. Oh, More. Part. oh, dear. What's That's that? Cool. And a cum rag. Oh. <laughs> what more could you want in this time of isolation? Trevor, what's the view like over there? 
It's, it's very good as but from 1.5 meters away. It's fabulous. <laughs> 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 oh gosh! Imagine oh, what true. Imagine what Pam doing if the clean up with that lot. Okay. Um, all you've got to do is head back to Stonewall.live after the show. Enter your details, and ten lucky winners will be sent a Swiss Navy goodie bag. Uh, and whilst you're at it, there, whilst you're there, rather, you can please donut and help donut. You could donut or donate. Okay. Uh, you were giving and taking, and now you're talking about donuts. donuts. I don't get it. Oh, it's look. It's on a Saturday night. Uh, please donate and to the show and we'll be forever grateful. Now, we are live on Facebook tonight so you can like and comment and share us around like a goon bag at a campsite. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> they get worse. I've got to say so much more. It oh, really, Dan. It, Dan, keep them coming. It's... Come on, keep it up, Dan, keep it up, Dan. It's all coming. Right. Uh, now, she's a British comedy icon that has graced more screens and stages than I've had hot dinners. Um, order cue, please, Mike. <laughs> uh, she's starting oh, West we End shows. Never, 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 never have known. Uh, she's starting West End shows from Mamma Mia to Wicked and is perhaps best known globally for playing the much loved Fleur in Absolutely Fabulous for an incredible 20 years. It's the beautiful Harriet Thorpe. Oh, have we Harriet. got Harriet? Harriet. Oh, we've got... We'll get there. We'll get there. I'm here. Oh, oh she's you're there. Here. I'm here, darling, oh. but I don't know if you can see me. I'm Boy. waving frantically. We can definitely oh. hear you. We need you to push the button to turn the screen around, Harriet, because we're seeing ourselves, which is quite nice. That's no good, darling. One I... second. That's all right. Mm. Spin it round. Oh, I look good. As Carly would sing. You look great. That's quite Can't nice. Can't say too much. Here we... Oh, wow. Yeah. Hello, Harriet. Oh, Harriet, how are you? You've, you All the way from the UK. I know. Oh. Who knew? <laughs> she knows where she is. She, she knows. knows where she is. <laughs> You look absolutely amazing. You look no different than when I watched you on an Abfab many years ago. I know, darling, the magic of filter. I never <laughs> age. <laughs> Listen, Harry, how are you doing in lockdown? How's it going for you there? It's insane. And it's also amazing because of what it brings out in people. The shift and the tide has turned mm. rather than panic as to what do we do? What can we do to help each other? Mm. Yeah. Which is very important. And there's been a lot in the UK about helping the NHS workers, hasn't there? There's been lots going on. I've seen you online with that. And that just looks, I mean, it's just when to burst into tears watching that. It's just amazing. It's so moving, everybody coming out and cheering. And um, they are this amazing army in blue. <laughs> now, listen, obviously we love you in AbFab. And it's pretty obvious uh, the reason the show is such a success. You're just all best mates, aren't you? All of you are just best friends, which is why it seems to work so well. Jennifer and I were at drama school together. Wow. And we've known each other for 40 years and have been friends before any of this happened. Mm. She created AbFab, and I remember her talking about it. We were on holiday, two families, um, um, my kids and her kids, and she was saying, I've got this idea, and I said, it sounds wonderful. And she said, I have a daughter. I said, I could do that. I could crush my tits down, and I could play your younger, uh, young daughter. And she said, I crush no. my tits down every um, week as well, Harriet. <laughs> I, I know, darling. I think you might find it slightly easier than I do, but I'm letting that go for a moment. Um, <laughs> um, anyway, that, and I remember her talking about it, and she is beyond brilliant and clever. And the people that we work together and work with, uh, we just have a laugh. We just have a laugh from the, from the moment we started to the last time we did it. It's well, the just show is just pure joy. That's what I love about AbFab. As much as it goes all craziness, yeah. you can see that kinship and friendship between all of you. It comes through the screen, and there's nothing better than that. I actually, when we, we had the AbFab launch here, I was the drag version of Patsy and got to meet Joanna and Jennifer, which was quite, quite an amazing <laughs> experience for me also. And Joanna said I had better legs than her. It's the best compliment I've ever had. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, Harriet, can I ask you, obviously you've done loads of stage as well, and um, you were in cabaret, weren't you, and all sorts. And, and tell us, are there any good stories of it that's been happening for you on stage? Um, I remember in my youth, my first job was at Repertory Theatre, and we did this big musical, and um, it was set in um, America in, with cowboys. Can't go wrong. Lovely. And they insisted on bringing a live horse on stage. Not a small horse, darling, a big shire horse. <laughs> and, of course relentlessly chat on stage um, every night. I've been That's there as well. Done. Yeah, I've shut myself on stage. I've been there as well. We did Cinderella the Panto and we had a pony, did exactly the same thing. <laughs> Harry. Yeah. It's, it, that's a pony, John. This was a Shire horse. This is a pony. <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. A mountain forgive, shit. forgive. Listen, what's behind you? There's loads of pictures and things behind you. What's on your, on your shelf? 
this is a little camp corner uh, <laughs> dedicated to myself. People say I'm self-obsessed, but I say no. And maybe some of the awards I might have made myself, but um, that's all right. Um, and it's a little salute to my family, to my kids, to the shows that I've done. And oh, actually, I've got this lovely picture of um, my darling friend, Michael Batchelor, when we were training together at the Royal Ballet School. And he was, we shared a flat, we were great friends, and he died from AIDS quite early on. Wow. And I remember us talking about it and not realizing that this was something that was a reality as a, as a pandemic. Yeah. And, and it's unimaginable to have lost all my friends, to look at obituaries in my late 20s, early 30s, of my pals who I'd grown up with. And what did I learn from this? What did I, what did I learn from this mm. impossible time? Which was that through the struggle, you find a solidarity and you find survival. And the survival is everything. And that is what we have to learn today. Yeah. Mm. That this is unimaginable. Some weird, you know, germ mm. just regardless of who or where or wherever you are, this is the world yep. that is experiencing this. Yep. And what comes out of it is this amazing togetherness. And mm. I do a lot of work for uh, Make a Difference Trust, which is an AIDS charity here, which is all the West End theatres coming yeah. together to do shows, amazing fun times in the West End to raise money for AIDS. That's incredible. Um, but it's, it's unimaginable and impossible, but we will survive this. Yes. I know it because I've done it before. Mm. And we're waiting for the vaccine. You know, Michael, unfortunately, didn't get the, the sort of combination meds. He wasn't there in time. But we will. And although it's impossible, we will be together and survive. Oh, Harry, I think that's a really good message and actually something we can all relate to wherever we are in the world, in the UK. And, you know, we've spoken to people in New York and L.A., everywhere. <laughs> um, thank you so much for coming on the show, Harry. It's so, so good to see you. And can I say just a few things that I can't live without. Yes. Um, just to share them. Yes. That, um, first of all, hydration is very important. <laughs> um, yes. Also, it's very important, self-care, yes. is to have health in every sense that you can. Oh, yes, um, please. Because the calcium, <laughs> calcium is very important. And you may know that sugar, obviously, is a plant. Yes. So again, it's, it's a very necessary thing. Those are the essential items. Oh, I love that. Your isolation essential items. Thank you, Harriet. <laughs> Thank you for coming on our little show, Harriet. Oh, My so pleasure. good. And you look absolutely beautiful. And one thing I'd like to say, is, well, just to touch on what you were talking about before, I always believe there's just one race and it's the human race and it touches us all. And I love that you, you said that earlier. That really brought it home for me as well. I love that you said that. And thank you for coming. Thank love you so much. Love her. Love her. Beautiful. Okay. I love that. It's now time to take a look at our top movie pick of the week. Uh, so thanks to our friends at Queer Screen, helping you discover the best queer films you can watch right now in the sanitized comfort of your home. Tonight's choice is the incredible film called Pride. It's the summer of 1984. Margaret Thatcher is in power and the National Union of Mine Workers is on strike. At the Gay Pride March in London, a group of gay and lesbian activists decide to raise money to support the families of the striking miners. The problem is the union seems embarrassed to receive their support. Um, Undeterred, the activists decide to ignore the union and go direct to the miners. They identify a mining village in deepest Wales and set off in a minibus to make their donation in person. And so, the big, so begins rather the extraordinary story of two seemingly alien communities who form a surprising and um, ultimate uh, fantastic partnership. The film won multiple awards, including the prestigious Queer Palm at Cannes 2014. It's a stunning film. It's so impressive. Have a look. The government today insisted that it will close 20 pits with the loss of over 20,000 jobs. Without that pit, these villages are finished. Mining communities are being bullied just like we are. What they need is cash. Yeah, because the miners have always come to our aid, haven't they? It doesn't they? matter. It's the right thing to do. When you're in a battle against an enemy so much bigger, so much stronger than you, but to find out you had a friend you never knew existed, well, that's the best feeling in the world.
That is such a great film. We all love that. Everyone here is talking and nodding and going. It's brilliant. I One of my particular it. favourites. I love adore it. it. And you can find that on Netflix. Now, for more information, head to queerscreen.org.au to check out the latest film news, uh, become a member, and get information on their next film festival. Okay, we're about to chat to our next guest. But before we do, a reminder to please donate to the show, and we'll be so grateful. We are live on Facebook tonight, so like, comment, and share us around like tit tape at a drag show. Uh, right. <laughs> she's one of Australia's biggest voices and is about to blow the roof off. She's always been one of my idols. It's Cosima DeVito! Oh my God, you look fantastic. <laughs> Yay, look at those bunny ears. Woo! It reminds me when you did hot stuff on Australian Idol, still looking a hot 100. Even though it was like 17 years ago. Oh, and you haven't lost and I anything. Was young. <laughs> you still look young. Thanks, babe. <laughs> How are you doing in isolation? How's, how's it going for you? You know what? I, I, I'm actually getting things accomplished. I'm, I'm gardening and I'm baking and I'm cooking. My husband's loving it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the perfect housewife now. Yeah. Have you, did you not cook for your husband prior to this? <laughs> yeah. So I do, I've been watching you on the Instagram just secretly and I yep. saw you do Celine Dion's All Coming Back to Me Now and singing oh. to your beautiful cat. Oh, yeah. Loretta. She's so cute. Loretta. Yes. She's how beautiful. You, I want to know how you came up with the name Loretta for your cat. Sorry, pussy. Pussy, my pussy cat. I have no idea. I don't know. I just came... I don't know. It just came I don't to even you. remember. Okay, maybe it was my sister that named her. I don't remember who named it. While I've been in isolation, I've had my computer on shuffle, and many years ago, I bought an album of yours called "This Is Now," and oh yes, it is just such a fantastic album. Can you tell me more? I want you to tell me more about this album because I just adore it. Oh yeah, well, the, uh, "This Is Now" was the second album um, that I released, and it was. Um, Predominantly songs that I had written, so yeah, it was it was very pop rock, a lot of uh, rock ballads, and yeah, I loved it. I loved it because it was very sentimental, and, and it uh, was songs that I had written and co-written. So it was very special. The first one I loved, but obviously the second one was um, stuff that I had done myself and got into the songwriting a little bit more. So it was a lot more special for me. Yeah. And you actually performed one of those songs at Sleaze Ball off that album. Keep it natural. Yes, and I'm going to let you in a little bit of a secret. I was your choreographer, Cosima. You may not yes, know that were. dress like this. Yes, you were. Wow. <laughs> yes. And you were amazing. That was so much fun. I miss it. Oh, oh. And you could see the joy on your face performing for all the homosexuals. I oh, loved it. that was the best. That was so much fun. I want to hear you <laughs> sing. Can we, can we hear you sing? Of course. We want to hear you. We'd love to. Sure. Well, yeah, I've, I've definitely been doing a lot of that, even yeah. if it is in my living room. Um, uh, look, I, I thought I would dedicate a song um, to to all the healthcare workers and everyone on the front line. I think it's important that we we do a shout out to them because yeah. they've been amazing. And I've got friends as well that are um, nurses and and working in the laboratory. So yeah, definitely. Oh, that'd be fantastic. Thank you. Take it away, Cosima. Actually, we'll give you a big intro. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome all the way from her bedroom, the one, the only, Miss Cosima DeVito. <laughs> Oh, 
but don't let anyone take them away. Yeah. Hold on, they'll be tomorrow, but inside. Cosmo, I've got goosebumps. Well, you know what? Oh my gosh. You know what? I should say that all, what everyone staying at home is a hero. Really. Yeah. When you yes. really think about it. Oh, we that are. is amazing. That is amazing. Oh my gosh, that is incredible. Thank you so, so, so much. That has just been incredible. I feel like I could burst into tears, but I won't. Oh, we need to keep going. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh. How good <laughs> Thank, is... you guys. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. You're doing a fabulous job. Thank and you look, you. I'm loving you in the bunnies I love too. The bunny <laughs> You're gorgeous. I'm jealous. Give it up for Cosma. Oh, Bye -bye. wow. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Okay, uh, this week we thought, it, we thought it was important to explore the history and importance of the Stonewall Hotel. Stonewall means an enormous amount to the community, whether you've partied here, worked here, or performed here. We wanted to shine a light on its illustrious history. Join us now for a walk down memory lane. We're heading up to level three. This is actually where we film live at Stonewall. It is dark right now. I am Minnie Cooper. I'm a 47-year-old man that dresses up in women's clothes and tries to entertain people. The best part about being a drag queen is that you can speak the truth and people allow it. I was 19, started in musical theatre, did shows like Hot Shoe Shuffle with the wonderful Rhonda Birchmill, who was a guest on our show. Did shows like Chicago. I even danced behind Kylie Minogue at the Olympics. If you check out that video, you'll see me in a pink suit. I got a close-up. <laughs> Doing drag can be considered shameful, but I stuck at it because I just loved it. Fundamentally, it's something I have to do. It's like food for me. Just before we were told to be in self-isolation, Stonewall was about to launch the Hello Darling Theatre. So it really hasn't had a launch, but this is where we filmed live at Stonewall. There's all this taping on the floor that makes us social distance and we all have to stay within our perimeters, our social distancing stick. <laughs> Make sure everyone stays away. <laughs> Ever since I came out, I've always been a part of the scene, whether it had been helping on a Mardi Gras float. Whenever I was asked to do something, I would always say yes. Community, I think, is where people get to belong. For a lot of gay people, especially when I grew up, you never met a gay person. So you would come into this world, there were people that were like you and thought like you, and it doesn't make you feel alone. Oh, there's my star, do you love that? Mm -hmm. Didn't kiss the floor though. <laughs> this is where I normally am. And at the moment I don't get to perform on this stage because, look, there's chairs on. It's a place of magic and joy. Hopefully we'll get back there one day. I have been working at Stonewall since 2004. And what I love about Stonewall the most is that they're always a big supporter of everyone, no matter who you are. It doesn't matter if you're gay, straight, non-binary, it's about everybody having a safe place to be who they want to be. That's why I love Stonewall, because they've always been a big supporter. I actually worked here before it became Stonewall in this building, when it was called The Loft, and then it closed down for a couple of years and Stonewall was reopening. Stonewall takes its name from the riot of 1969, which happened at the Stonewall Inn in Greenwich Village. And that was such an important part of our history, the part of gay liberation as we know it. And that history is part of our community and needed to be told that story, that to open Stonewall here and bring it to our community has been amazing, you know, to remember that history. And one of our taglines here at Stonewall Hotel is, the history is remembered, but the future is here. Stonewall does a lot for the community. We have since we opened the doors. We do a lot of fundraisers, you know, for people like ACON, the AIDS Trust, 2010. We've also done things like um, Hose for Hope, something we did for the um, fires. We did a big fundraiser and had people perform and things that the community really cared about, you know, 
we don't just care about things that are, are gay, lesbian, trans, we care about other things that affect us like the fires. We did a fundraiser for the farmers called Gay for Hay and you know, and that was loads of fun but we worked hard and they needed it and we raised $10,000 here at Stonewall in one week. That's part of our community too and we need to give back to those people. You know, any time that someone's in need or, or there's a community that needs help, I feel like here at Stonewall we try to think about that and see what we can do. To me, live from Stonewall is a great way for us to connect with our staff, with our customers, with the people that have enjoyed this place for 22 years. We can still stay connected, still entertain people, which is such a big part of what Stonewall does. It's not just about selling alcohol, it's about entertaining, it's about being fun. And it's also about you know, caring about our community. One of the big parts I've loved about this is industry professionals getting together to create something for community, which they probably couldn't normally do because they're off working, doing other things. And there are photos online, you can see the setup and the crew. And at the moment, no one is getting paid, but things cost money. And if people don't support this through donation, it is not gonna last. I know a lot of people out there have lost their jobs and might not have any spare cash. But those people that still have their jobs and are able to donate, we have a GoFundMe. If you can possibly donate, we'd appreciate it so we can keep this going for everyone. Normally when I'm walking down these stairs, I am bumping into people and they're, they're not getting out of my way. So it is really strange to be able to walk down these stairs with no one here. I feel like I'm not really at Stonewall. I feel like I'm in a haunted house. It's important to me to make sure that we know that we haven't lost everything. Because I feel like at the moment I've lost everything. And if I feel like that, there's a lot of people that feel like that. I've put on a smile, put on a dress, and done this to make sure that people still feel like they have something. And that's what I thought. I think, uh, Minnie, you know, it's something that we're doing every Saturday night and we're loving it, but it's for a lot of reasons, isn't it? It's, it's, it's not just to get up and sing and dance. It, it, it means a lot to us and to everyone that's here. I know, it's funny. I think you could look at it and think that Stonewall here is making all this money because we have all these celebrities coming on. But it's fundamentally, it's, no one's making anything at the moment. And I just think it, it looks odd, to, what it looks like on the outside. But to me, the most important part of this is that Stonewall has come together to keep the community together and present lots of different people, not just from our Stonewall home, but across the world. And people from the Stonewall home will have a part of this. It's just going to take time. It'll be over yep. time. And it's not all happening in one hit, but it will happen. Yep. And I'm just a big thank you to the Stonewall managers for making this happen and to Glenn especially for allowing it to happen. Yeah. And, you know, we love doing this show and we love entertaining you guys, but, you know, we are doing this to keep you entertained, to give you something to look forward to, to get involved, especially in our industry, which has been struck, you know, terribly. You know, if you work in media and the arts, a lot of people aren't getting any government funding, people from other countries. So we're doing a lot. And even though there's hardly anyone here, uh, you know, because we're not allowed to, we are working hard to, to have a, a Saturday night show that you can enjoy and just to, to keep us, you know, you know, entertaining you guys and keeping busy. And I think it's, it's fun, but we need your help. So obviously, if you can help us and support us, that would be great. And we want to hear from me with your feedback and that's why on Facebook you can comment and you know it's it's a community that we care about the LGBTIQ plus community is one thing that we're talking about but everyone is affected globally and we're aware of that aren't we Minnie? Oh 100 percent 100 percent and thank you all for tuning in. Yes we are. And I hope you donate. <laughs> Please if you can. Uh, okay Stonewall supports many charities and 10 percent of tonight's donations will go to Australia's longest running HIV charity the Bobby Goldsmith Foundation. Um, so please donate for, uh, to the show, we'll be so grateful. And guys, just remember, look out for each other, keep checking in on your friends and stay connected. Okay, and speaking of being connected, we are live on Facebook tonight. So like, comment and share us around like a bong at a student house. Oh dear. And smelly socks. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, it's almost the end of the show. Minnie, go and get ready for your next number. Go, okay, go, go. I shall. Go. Uh, thank you so much for watching. It does mean the world to us. Please donate to help us keep going. Now, thanks to the Stonewall. Huge thanks to all our amazing guests. Thanks to our sexy barman of Arn and Pandemic for keeping us clean. There they are. Thank you, guys. Uh, thanks to our in-house DJ, Dan Murphy. 
Uh, we'll be back next week with more amazing guests uh, next Saturday at 8 p.m. So joining us from around Australia next week is comedian Steph Tisdall, singer uh, Isaiah Firebrace. We've got drag star Doreen Magnani plus Jake Goblonski. Doreen Magnani! Doreen Magnani! <laughs> Did you hear something? I thought I did. Uh, we'll be live in the studio discussing the indigenous LGBTIQ plus community and his work with Charity Black Rainbow. We'll also find out what gets Mr. Gay World, Jordan Bruno Messi, in the kitchen. Now, self-proclaimed social media influenza, Carla from Bankstown will be here revealing her latest invention. Comedy legend Bob Down will be here joining us live in the studio and soul diva Emily Williams will be showing off her incredible pipes. Uh, we've got queer... Comedian and bossy bottom Zoe Coombs Ma will also be joining us. Plus, we'll be chatting to social media superstar Jade Kevin Foster. And our house DJ is none other than Ray Isaac. Wow, it's going to be a massive show. That's an hour next week? Good God. Uh, and we'll be back live on Facebook. Of course, if you've enjoyed tonight's show, please share us around on Facebook. You guessed it, like lube at an orgy. <laughs> amuses myself. Okay, she's fixed the makeup, she's fixed the tuck, and she's ready to finish you off the only way she knows how. It's Minnie's happy ending! Now, ladies and gentlemen, just before I went into lockdown, I met a lovely man, and I happened to be in the urinal at the same time he didn't know I was there, and this is a little story he was telling his mate. Here we go. Thank you, Dan. Hit it. I met this girl... And she's just great, a girl I just adore. She's tall, she's thin, six foot four, that and so much more. She's got that style, she's got that smile, she's got the walk, she's got the talk. She's got that zing, there's just one thing. She's got a penis. She's got a penis. She's got that flair, knows what to wear. She's got that face, that girlish grace. She's got pizzazz, too bad she has a penis. She's got a penis. Now nobody's perfect, I must admit. Say how many times do all the pieces fit? She's got more going than most other dolls. Oops, I forgot about the balls. This babe's a trip, and she's so hip. She's got that face, that girlish grace. She's got pizzazz, too bad she has a penis. Those lips, those eyes, then big surprise, that penis. Now, ladies and gentlemen, while you're at home in your living room, why don't you all say penis? penis. But I much prefer cock, ladies and gentlemen, because it feels better in your mouth. Everyone say cock. cock. See what I mean? One more time. Say cock. Cock. Who doesn't love the cock? <laughs> There's always some failures, always some flaws. Ain't that what they call Murphy's Law? But the male genitalia is where I draw the line. Besides hers is bigger than mine. She's got the class. She's got the sass. She's got that chic. She's so mystique, she's cool, she's hot. She's got the lot, except the amount of Venus. It's a tragedy, cause where that should be, she's got a penis. She's got a penis. My life's a mess because under that dress she's got a P E N I S. Yes, penis. Good night, Australia. What a way to say good night. <laughs>